Jason Roselle. You're watching Get Inspired with Jason. Welcome to a brand new episode of Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show. And as most of you do or some of you don't know, before starting my life, wellness, relationship and branding companies, coaching people and helping them, I was a quote unquote, let's use the term loosely, loosely a famous reality star. Some people call it celeb reality star. Some people call it superstar. Whatever you want to call it, I was one of those people. And I say that because I starred in VH1's highest rated uh, show in network history. The name of the show was called I Love New York. And shortly after, they followed up a series of I Love New York Part 2. Now, the show, which brings me in a minute to our guest, our special guest that we have today, is a show where 20 bachelors compete for the love of one special lady. Now, this lady, uh, her name is Tiffany Pollard, a.k.a. New York. Yes, that's her. <laughs> and uh, I got to say, this show was one of the biggest shows ever. Uh, I went from sleeping in a couch to one day being on billboards, and I couldn't believe what happened to my life. Today on the show, I have a gentleman by the name of George Weisberger, a.k.a. Taylor Made. Taylor Made swept the nation by storm. And when I say swept the nation by storm, he won the love and affection of Tiffany Pollard by winning the show, beating out all the gentlemen, and becoming one of the biggest reality stars in network history. I am proud to introduce, introduce you the one and only Taylor Maid. How are you, boss? Hey, Jason, what's going on? It's been a while. Great, great to connect. Oh, my God. It's been, uh, uh, yeah, about, what, 10, 11 years, it's right? It's been, been, been over a decade at least. Yeah, yeah, probably 12 years. So what was that, 2008, I think, was the last time I saw you? 2008. So, That's yeah, did, yeah. Yeah. So 12 years. So it's been a minute. But uh, and I know you've been asking me to do this for a while. And uh, I'm glad we I finally found an opportunity. Uh, you know, as you, you texted me, uh, you know, earlier in the week and you said, hey, listen, everyone's quarantined. There's no excuse that, you know, you can't have, you know, 30 minutes available for a, for a quick uh, Zoom call. And, and, and I agree. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm here in New York. I do love New York, the city that is. And, um, you know, I felt, uh, you know, we are all quarantined. I'm maintaining, you know, uh, social distancing, but it is a decent uh, day out. So I decided to come out of my fire escape and figured I'll, you know, do the, uh, do the interview from here. Absolutely. I mean, we've been for the past few years. I mean, I've had a YouTube channel for a while. I've had so many people have interest in obviously what has happened to all the stars of VH1. And you were one of the biggest names that came about. And I was like, what better opportunity to get you on the show? Because the fans that have been watching for years, they're still going crazy saying, when are these shows coming back? And I don't know if they're coming back, but we're going to dive in deep and answer a lot of fan-based questions. Of course, catch up with your current life, what you've been up to, and anything to empower and inspire people. Because clearly the name of the show is Get Inspired. You know what I mean? <laughs> you there? Yeah, and I think it's great what you're doing to inspire people. Yeah, I think it's amazing what you're doing to inspire people. I think now more than ever, uh, you know, with COVID-19 and this crisis that we're going through, uh, people need inspiration, especially people, you know, who might be at home and alone or first responders, people, uh, you know, obviously people who are sick, who have loved ones who are sick. So I think it's really, uh, you know, I, I heard a little bit about what you're doing with Get Inspired, and, and uh, I commend you. I think it's a great thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, we all go through life struggles, which will be one of the things I'll be asking you how you got to where you are today. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to catch up on how you have become so politically active, how you've become such a strong entrepreneur working with large scale and small scale businesses, which the audience wants to learn about. But let's just go back in time just a little bit. And for everybody listening right now, if you want to see this actual episode and slides of photos or videos, make sure to check it out on YouTube. You'll be able to enjoy this visually and see that. George has not aged one bit. I mean, it's been, it's, come on, tell me the truth. Is it Botox or what's going on? <laughs> no, I think, I think, I think you and I were both just, just lucky. I think we both uh, live, 
healthy lifestyles. I know you're a little bit, you're a lot more into the fitness than I am, but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I only drink, you know, in moderation and then, uh, you know, obviously don't, don't smoke. So, uh, you know, I think I take good care of me. And I always, and since the show, I, people used to make fun of me on the show, but I did always believe in good skincare. Uh, you know, I used to wear those, uh, Korean uh, face masks. So, uh, you know, so I think we've been both been blessed in, in that we've kind of, uh, you know, aged gracefully, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's uh, I'm grateful it's, for that. It's a blessing. We got to, you know, we only have, you know, like I tell people, we only have one body, one, you know, we have only one uh, uh, soul, one like manifested, make it the best that you can because that's it. That's all we have is our health. You know what I mean? Exactly. So let me ask you because a lot of the audience that may not know about you or the actual reality shows, uh, after you, you, you did I Love New York, where me and you met was a show called. I love money season two. I, I went, I did part one, then season two, you became a finalist. So, uh, I want everybody to know if you have not ever heard of Taylor made, uh, George Weisberger, uh, check it out and how he, he, he did so well on these shows. Uh, so the first question, fan base question is, do you, did you really have love for New York and what was it that you were doing prior to the show? Like, and, and how did it end ultimately? Yeah, well, I was, uh, you know, I was working in, in, in corporate and, and I just kind of uh, really wanted to, you know, just kind of, kind of itch to do something different. And one day I was reading in the, the New York Post about uh, an open casting call for, uh, you know, I Love New York too. I had seen the first season and, you know, uh, I thought Tiffany was, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, very interesting. And I thought you and, 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 and the dynamic of competing for her, I mean, it was, it was a very, uh, the show was is amazing and uh it was definitely entertaining to say the least and and uh yeah so i decided to give it a try and um you know i actually quit my job i had budget meetings coming up and they uh, uh they were like no we're not gonna give you a leave of absence to go on a reality show but well, i feel like i figured hey listen if you want to give it a try and and it was def definitely very interesting ex experience you know uh, uh the dynamic of competing against 19 other guys uh i'm i'm definitely not what you'd call like a bro so uh this was uh you know, an experience kind of living with a lot of guys who are kind of, you know, meatheads, so to speak. And, uh, you know, the strategy of it getting under their skin and kind of, uh, you know, playing them against each other was, was, was definitely very interesting. Uh, it was not net, you know, I, one thing I always say is, is, is the show one, it's not scripted, but, but it is a controlled environment and, you know, it is a competition. So we, might act differently than we would uh, under other circumstances. So, so some of the things I did that might have been uh, considered a little, you know, Machiavellian or or somewhat, uh, you know, uh, you know, dubious. Uh, I, they, you know, that was that was all part of the game. And then uh, after winning, I loved New York. Uh, you know, you know, did some other shows, and then had an opportunity to go on, uh, you know, I Love Money, which uh, which was actually a very you know different dynamic hold because on, hold now on. you know it was about. Yeah. Hold on, before we get into I Love Money, not to interrupt. Uh, you still didn't answer the question with the, one of the questions. Sorry, because I gave you three. Did, yeah. you, did you really, really love New York? And what happened after filming I Love New York between the both of you prior to doing I Love Money season two? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, uh, I think, you know, in that controlled environment, you know, sometimes you may, uh, you know, develop feelings or, or, you know, for someone. But then outside of it, you may see that, you know, you may not necessarily have been as compatible uh, as you were in, in, in that other situation, but she's a, you know, very genuine person. Uh, she's definitely authentic. And I would say of anybody on, uh, any of the shows, she's the realist in terms of the characters she's portrays, uh, you know, on television is not, uh, any different than, than who she is, uh, when the camera's not rolling. So that, that's one thing I, I will say she's probably, you know, the most authentic, uh, whereas a lot of us, you know, we were on the show, we kind of, uh, you know, work, store producers had a certain persona uh, that, that might have been a lean uh, on the show. And then, you know, when the cameras are, aren't rolling, they, you know, the, the, the two people are best friends. But uh, with her, uh, you know, she's, she's uh, you know, she's, she's for real. Uh, so I, I give her that. And, um, yeah, so I mean, it didn't didn't work out, but uh, you know, I, I wish her well, and she is a you know good good person, and I'm happy to see that. I, I think uh, more recently she's been back on TV, and I think audiences love her, and I think that that's uh, that's great. 
Um, and yeah, and then, uh, then from, you know, from, from being on the show, then, you know, I had the opportunity to go on this different show, which is, which was where I, I met you in person the first time. I, I love New York too. And, uh, I'm not, sorry, I love money too. And, uh, yeah, that was a different dynamic. Uh, yeah, I love money. Uh, you know, I, like for instance, uh, some people on the show who you would have thought that, you know, me, you know, we'd be complete opposites and, and enemies and rivals actually turned out to, you know, be friends. For instance, uh, Kwame Smalls, who went by the moniker It, you know, him and I became friends uh, on the first season on, on I Love New York. And there was a thing where he stole my roses. Uh, but I just said, this guy is, is hysterical. And uh, he was kind of like, like a Dave Chappelle. You know, you've been around him just as you're cracking up, uh, you know, nonstop. Uh, and on, the, uh, on I Love Money 2, uh, we formed a, uh, an alliance, so to speak, which is how we uh, eliminated you from 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 from, uh, from contention. But uh, but yeah, it was it was very interesting, and and uh, you know it, it's funny how so many people from different walks of life kind of came together, you know, uh, formed bonds, worked strategically. Uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing, and I and I I have I don't really watch as much reality TV nowadays, but uh, but and I don't know, but I I think it I think it was a I think it was a great show, and I give the producers a lot of credit for coming up with the concept. No, I completely agree. I mean, the, 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 like we're still titled, uh, you know, I was reading an article not too long ago, uh, the real OGs of reality TV. And, and you think about it to yourself and I'm like, damn, I guess I was, right? Because we really were back then, these reality shows. And that's my next question. What would you say is the difference between reality shows then and now? Because a lot of times people still ask me to this day, was the show scripted? Was this real? And I usually tell them, hey, look, you know, most of it is edited, but what you saw is what you got. You know what I mean? Uh, I personally did not even know I was competing for New York because you had an advantage point over me. I was, on my story, I was a working actor. I had just become SAG. Uh, I did a small role on Entourage season three. I don't know if you remember that show. And Yeah, great show. Yeah, and it was not even three months later. You know, I was a working actor, not make you know making any big hits. I was broke, and uh, I went on Craigslist and I found this ad. Um, Do you want to be on a bachelor like show competing for a girl? And I auditioned. I got this role. Fast forward, they wouldn't tell me who it was. They said it's between these four girls from Flavor of Love. I did the show, and I was in cahoots. Like, oh my god! But to answer. The question, my opinion, uh, when I did the show, it was all real editing had to, a lot to do with it. I think most of the shows nowadays are so heavily scripted and guided. Let's, let's rephrase that, guided. They'll put you in a scene. Because, you know, I've done a few other reality shows since then. I did a competition show uh, on Spike TV with Jillian Michaels that I won. Um, it, it was kind of like, oh, a, really? yeah, it was like, kind of like Top Chef, but it was uh, it's oh, called okay. Wet Ink. It's where um, they brought about thousands of companies, excuse me, out of thousands of fitness companies around the United States, they picked the top 25. And I was one of them, and I competed with other companies in the group fitness division. Anyways, I ended up winning the group fitness division, uh, division becoming a finalist. Didn't win the, the, the actual show, but I won my division. I won $10,000. So, again, it's just a change, in my opinion. What's your take on it? Yeah, well, I think that the prol- proliferation of reality TV partly had to do with um, the the Writers Guild strike, which I think was around 2008. Uh, so there was uh, kind of uh, a gap in, in content that, that needed to be filled. Uh, one thing I think now is we do have so much more content with, with streaming services, you know, Netflix, Amazon Prime. I think the quality of truly scripted has, you know, scripted, uh, you know, dramas, you know, out right now. Uh, in terms of reality television, I think you're you're right in what you said, in that it's become more scripted. I think part of that has to do with a lot of the reality shows now are more I, like what you call, I don't know, docu dramas or docu series, meaning uh, they're not necessarily competition based shows. They're, uh, you know, what like the Real Housewives or something. So whereas that is highly scripted. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think one thing that, that was very unfortunate that happened, and one of the reasons that uh, 51 Minds and VH1 you know, stopped with the uh, Love you know, series, so to speak, uh, was that, you know, as you know, there was a tragic uh, you know, murder uh, of one of the contestants was, that was on uh, one of the I Love Money 
uh, uh, sequels. And uh, since that, they've had to uh, vet, uh, you know, um, across the whole industry, there's been a lot more vetting of, of contestants. And, and, and why that could be a, a challenge is, as you know from our show, there were some people who were uh, pretty, uh, pretty out there, uh, you know, like Buddha, you know, assaulted me uh, on the show. He uh, headbutted me, kind of lost his temper. And, you know, maybe now, you know, because of a concern of a potential liability, I think maybe now the vetting process is a lot stricter, which would uh, exclude people who might be very entertaining, uh, but, uh, you know, might, might have a, maybe psychologically they, they, they are shown to be, you know, a little, uh, have a temper or whatnot, so. Absolutely, I have to agree with you. I mean, the screening process, and you know, I'm sure has gone from one extreme to the next, but then again, ironic enough, uh, about a year ago, I had 12 pack on my show, Dave Ammerman, and we talked about this, hence why they had to stop production on all these I love shows. Yeah. Ironic enough, I still can't believe for the past, what, 10, 12 years, they have been rerunning the, or at least the original series of I Love New York. I mean. Same thing with the, what was it, the Rock of Loves and all these things. Uh, but tell the audience, you know, uh, so you're an entrepreneur now. You're a, I mean, you are very politically active. You, you know, you work in conscious capitalism. Uh, you have, you work with startups, small businesses. What's, what's the next thing for, for George Weisberger, a.k.a. Taylor May? Yeah, well, I mean, on the, uh, you know, entrepreneurial front, you know, I work to help, you know, small businesses, startups, uh, you know, specifically uh, B Corps, which are uh, basically benefit corps or for-profit companies that have a social mission. And, uh, and then politically, I am, uh, uh, I was elected to the, you know, New York State County Committee, and I am very politically active. Uh, obviously, right now is uh, a very trying time for small businesses. I mean, uh, you know, restaurants and uh, you know, anything in hospitality, uh, you know, I, mean, I know you have a lot of connections in, in, in nightlife and bars. I mean, it's, it's really, uh, you know, devastating what's, what's happened to our uh, uh, economy. And just to, so we're clear, as I'm looking at, you know, depending when the audience listens or watch this, today is April 9th, 2020. We are in the middle of this pandemic, a pandemic here in the United States, globally, around the world. And, you know, I, I reiterate that specifically just because ah, life will never be the same. Right, George? <laughs> life yeah. will never be the same. And uh, I got to say, because I do a lot of coaching with different clients, um, uh, there's been a lot of positives. And, of course, it's very unfortunate. Obviously, people are unemployed uh, left and right. There's people that are passing away. But when I say positives is – people are actually in a weird sense more united than they've ever been right families are I, I agree. right families are actually sitting down having dinners with their family they're actually gardening they're actually working on themselves that they weren't doing before because they were so stuck on making money 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 and i hello we love money I, you know we know we love money but this is actually ironic enough has connected us deeper with people, which was lacking before. And I have a feeling we're gonna come out of this a lot better, a lot wiser, and a lot more humble, because it was missing, don't you agree? Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, here's a perfect example. I mean, you had been asking me to do this for, uh, you know, for like at least a year. And, you know, I'm always just texting back and forth. We're both so busy. Uh, and then now finally, you know, just kind of an opportunity to pause and, you know, connect with friends who you hadn't spoken to in a while. Uh, you know, you can see Zoom uh, has been, been, been a great way of bringing people together. Uh, you know, for my mother's birthday, uh, you know, I didn't, we didn't want to see her face to face, obviously, because, you know, um, you know, older people are, are at a higher risk. And, and, you know, we just kind of all connected via Zoom. Uh, like you said, people are, uh, uh, you know, finding opportunities to come together and most importantly, just be grateful for, for what we have. But in the meantime, I hope everybody just stays, stays safe. Stay safe, stay home. And we're going to leave, uh, uh, with the audience. I want to ask you, what are, are your top three books? And yes, George read a lot of books while I was in I Love Money season two, and he was clearly talented and was able to rock out two shows winning one becoming a finalist in the other 
What are your top three recommendations for books for people that are trying to like rock it out, become strategists that I, I got to admit, I admired what you did in these shows. So give us those top three books real quick. All right. So, yeah, so I'll give some of my favorite books, not necessarily uh, personal of uh, favorites of, of in, in all genres, but specifically uh, when it comes to strategy on something like a you know, reality show or just using strategies uh, in, 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 in everyday life. Uh, Robert Greene uh, is the author of uh, 48 Laws of Power uh, and the Art of Seduction. Uh, okay. Both of those books were uh, very useful uh, in uh, forming strategies on I Love uh, New York and I Love Money. Uh, Art of Seduction, isn't that? Influence, which is a great. Really, it's about strategies, not about love? Well, it's about strategies. Uh, it, it, we're, we're, what I like about Robert Greene is what he'll do is he'll he'll look at historical figures and strategies that they used uh, in you know for instance in uh, Forty Eight Laws of Power he might be talking about a strategy that Napoleon used uh, you know to defeat uh, you know uh, an adversary and and then he'll 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 link that to one of his Forty Eight Laws and the same thing with the Art of Seduction he'll look at uh, historical figures like Casanova Cleopatra and look at some of the ways that they were able to. Uh, you know, seduce, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, lovers, so to speak. And uh, so I think both of those books are, are very applicable to, uh, you know, the, the type of shows that we were on. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Outliers, which uh, by Malcolm Gladwell, or actually a better one by Malcolm Gladwell, which I've read more recently, would be very applicable, uh, is, uh, you know, David and, Goli and Goliath. And it's all about underdogs and how underdogs can uh, prevail and how sometimes having what's perceived as a weakness can be a strength. And I definitely think that I use that on both I Love New York. Uh, I mean, you know, they, they, the rivalry between Buddha and I, they, a lot of people uh, refer to it as a David and Goliath type, uh, yeah. uh, you know, rivalry. And, and in, in I Love Money, our alliance, our team was called the underdogs. And a lot of that included playing possum, you know, not showing your hands, letting your opponents, you know, think that you're weak. Um, and you know, there, so definitely two great reads, uh, a few great reads that I would recommend. That is so awesome. Yeah. I got to say, I, do, I was just saying this on my podcast yesterday. The strongest mu muscle that we all have is only six inches between our ears. It's our brain. And clearly Absolutely. you had the most thriving, strongest brain muscle. And, and once again, uh, I can't believe it's been this long, but it, but it's been such a pleasure to have you on. I want everybody to make sure to follow George, a.k.a. Taylor Made, on his social media. I'm going to be adding his links here in the caption. Uh, George, thank you for being you. You look fantastic. Keep on inspiring Thanks, people. And maybe we can do a part two sometime, okay? Yeah, sounds great. You know, uh, it's, I'm glad we finally uh, you know, got to connect. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a pleasure. Speak to you soon, buddy, and stay man. safe. Cheers. Hey, mind right, body tight. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.